listening to the Paul McGuire Report. This is Paul McGuire, and we are broadcasting, podcasting, and all over the internet and alternative media. Um, we're all over the globe, planet Earth, and we're talking about the most important topic there is Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ, who is Lord, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. No, we're not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm not embarrassed about talking about it openly, even as a conservative. But the bottom line is that you and I should be in the pursuit of truth. And why would that be? Because you cannot be a free human being. Your children, your spouse, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, whoever, you cannot, no one can be free. And everybody wants to be free, but nobody can be free without the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. So we're going to talk about freedom, how to be free, not like fake free. Fake free is what like Hollywood represents. The illusion, and let me emphasize the word illusion, the illusion of beautiful faces, people physically fit at the so-called ideal age, or at least spending a fortune in plastic surgery and injections to, to reinvent your face and your body and stuff like that. I'm not here to put people down for doing that because... If you're in that business or many other related businesses, you can't survive unless you do. You're, you're, you're like in the forgotten past. So the question is that, and this is the, the, the question that represents the doorway and the key to the doorway. You say, what doorway? We'll keep listening and we'll get into the doorway. But behind that door contains a series of the most powerful secrets in this world and in this universe. And they're only secrets because they are hidden from the average person. That's why in the book of Proverbs, God tells us to continually pursue wisdom, pursue knowledge, get vision, get understanding. Do it with all your might. Not sit on your posterior. And, and dip your toes into it every once in a while. But pursue wisdom and knowledge with all your might, because the payoff is freedom, power, knowledge, victory, things that are essential for living a life worth living. And that means you have to know what is really going on in terms of your reality, our reality, the collective reality, We have to know what's really going on. We have to have that knowledge, because when we have that knowledge, we have power. We're no longer victims. We're no longer slaves. Some people might say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, that's a a valid question. You and I have been deliberately, not just you and I, just about everybody you know and I know, perhaps all of them, we have deliberately been raised in a isolated environment. No, I don't care how crowded it was, or if it was in New York City or San Francisco. You were raised in an isolated environment. Intellectually, in terms of history and knowledge, that's what I mean by isolated. You were only, I was only allowed, you were only allowed to be taught to understand certain very pre-selected truths. And if those truths were not pre-selected and pre-approved by an elite, we weren't allowed to know know about it. So you and I grew up with a massive deficit in knowledge and understanding and wisdom because we weren't allowed to know an enormous amount about what this world is really all about what this reality is really all about, what is my life really all about, things like, is there a God or isn't there a God, and all the key questions, is there life beyond death, all these key questions. 
That is what allows a person to be a person of knowledge and power. But we went through an educational system, talking about those of you in Europe. A lot of people contacting us today from Australia. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spreading the word in Australia. We have lots of people uh, contacting us from, I guess you'd call them Midwestern states. Lots of people from all kinds of states in the United States and around the world. And all, all of them have one thing in common, the people that contact us. They have a hunger and a passion for truth and knowledge, and they already have uh, a significant degree of it, and it's just made them hungry for more truth and knowledge. So, you and I went through an educational system, which was in reality a mass indoctrination program called Education. It was a mass indoctrination program, a mass propaganda program, a mass uh, brainwashing program that was designed to make you a perfect cookie cutter, global, happy, happy global citizen with one of those uh, yellow badges with the black smiley face drawn into it. Now, don't, don't, don't get bent out of shape. I'm not talking about black in the sense of race. I'm talking about the happy button that, like Walmart and other giant retailers, was popular to be used everywhere. That's what I'm talking about. If you think there's a deeper meaning to it, fine. But don't blame me for telling you about it. So, we went through this indoctrination, this brainwashing, where just were a very distinct worldview was we were we were indoctrinated in a very specific worldview which would be called the secular humanist worldview we were brainwashed to believe to, we were brainwashed to become secular humanists and we were brainwashed to become believers true believers in, in the biggest cult in the world, which is the secular humanist uh, evolutionary cult. And it's a cult because it pretends to be a science, yet it has no scientific facts to back up the theory of evolution. So therefore, it's really just a theory. But the problem is, is that what you believe about your reality and this life and this world in terms of do you believe that there is a creator God who created us? Or rather, do you believe that we are the product of random chance, accidental evolution over 200 million years plus, and that we are randomly evolved from non-life to life to animals, and finally, you know, we become men and women? It's important what you believe, because remember, but we always say on the Paul McGuire Report, ideas have consequences, and bad ideas have bad consequences, and good ideas have good consequences. But if you don't fully understand this, it, it, will, it, it, it will be useless to you. That's why I, I titled my book specifically and intentionally with the title, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World. Notice that the greatest battle, which we're in now, and anybody who thinks or, or has a brain, knows that right now, as we're talking, wherever you are on planet Earth, we are right in the middle of the greatest battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world. So this greatest battle that we're in, is a battle, as I say in my cover title, of the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world. So it's an internal battle. It's a raging spiritual battle that is taking place in the hearts and minds of mankind. And that's where the battleground is. That's where the spiritual war is raging. It's raging in the area of the hearts and minds of mankind. Again, 
what what flows out of this is is what we're always talking about on the program. Ideas have, have consequences, and bad ideas have bad co- consequences. So hypothetically, let's say we have uh, tens of millions of people in America who believe that a creator God, the biblical God, created men and women, created creation, and that there is a creator, capital C, God. And then there are other millions and millions of people who do not believe in a biblical God or a creator God, and they believe that mankind, men and women, all people, were here simply by evolutionary accident and that there is no God, there's no meaning to reality, and we are all products of evolutionary theory. Okay, why these two belief systems, why these two sets of ideas are of a hypercritical importance is because both of these set of ideas produce specific consequences. They either produce negative consequences or they produce positive consequences. That's why it is all important regarding what your child is taught in the mass indoctrination centers that we call public education. So this is how it plays out. If you believe in the biblical God, the infinite personal living God of the universe, if you believe that we have all been created by this creator God, capital C, that we have all been made in God's image, there's a specific plan and purpose for our lives. And God made each one of us in his own image. If you believe that, then you also believe in concepts like right and wrong, good and bad, and other things. What what happens when a person believes all those things is that what flows from his or her life is goodness, is grace, is kindness, it's dignity and love towards others. At least it should be. And so that's a positive flow of positive spirituality, positive energy, positive ideas flowing out of people who believe, of, who believe in God into the world, into this nation, into this culture, and, and, and altering it and shaping it into something good and decent. The opposite idea flow is a negative idea flow that flows out of the lives of people who, um, who reject the biblical God and believe that we're the product of some kind of random chance evolution. We, we just evolved accidentally over 200 million years. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's no God. It's only the fittest survive in a random chance universe. So, you can't come to the overly simplistic conclusion that all people that are Darwinian evolutionists or secular humanists are necessarily bad people and have inferior ethical, moral judgment or whatever. You can't, you can't go there because that's, that's really irrational. What you, where you can go is you can say that there is a far higher percentage of people that believe in the ideas of right and wrong, good and bad, uh, the teachings of God, loving your neighbor as yourself, God is love. There's a higher percentage of those people that are being are making themselves available to releasing a positive flow of God's love, God's light, the teachings of God's word into our world and into our fellow man, altering it and making it a better place to live. I think we can say that about both directions. So, what is so important to to, to communicate to people, and that's why we we do the Paul McGuire Report 
that you're listening to now. It's why we do the prophetic emergency alert videos, <clears throat> and it's why we 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 uh, distribute the, these and and put them on all kinds of social media and audio and video channels, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and even more. And, and one hub for all of that is to visit paulmcguire.us. Check out on the front page the, the blow up in all color of all the brand new social media internet platforms that we're on. And you can just click any one of them and bam, it'll take you there in a second. And you can see all the alternative sites that we're already on reaching more people, different people all over the world, all over this nation. And I'm also telling you this because we live in chaotic times, in a time of great chaos. And that chaos is not accidental. But because we live in a time of instability and chaos, there is always the possibility that you can wake up and not find us. And yet, if you were proactive, which is what, why I'm talking to you now, and copied and pasted all the links and the different platforms we're on and, and how to get there. And you actually did it. You practice it and you write it down or you copy and paste it or, or video it on your cell phone or whatever. So you know exactly what to do if, gee, where is he? He disappeared. I, well, I can't find him. No, you'll be able to find Paul McGuire Ministries. So that's why I'm telling you this. because. In, in the time zone that we live in, anything is possible, and some things are more probable than others. And uh, let me simply add, let him or her who has ears or eyes to hear, hear what I just said. And I don't mean that to be flippant. I mean that because I'm imploring. I'm reaching out to you, and I'm telling you something very important ahead of time. Our goal is to keep communicating the gospel of Jesus Christ, to keep communicating a biblical worldview, to keep making disciples out of people, to keep communicating the Bible through like Bible prophecy and other things like that, to do the work of evangelism, to do the all-important work of being a watchman on the wall where God assigns an individual a ministry or whatever, like Paul McGuire Ministries or Paradise Mountain Church, one of our calls is to function as a watchman on the wall, which means go to a platform. Interesting, the word is platform. And I'm going to talk to you now, and, and I'm asking you to listen on more than one level. In the Old Testament, God speaks to the watchman and tells the watchman what his assignment is and what the consequences are if he fails in the mission that God has given him as a watchman on the wall. So his job is to go up to a high high platform or a high tower. And from this higher platform, he can see everything, including whether or not the enemies of the children of Israel were gathering and assembling way off in the distance and were preparing to mobilize to attack Israel. Now notice that the watchman's job was to stay awake, stay alert, keep a lookout for the enemies of God's people from the heightened perspective and power of being up on a high platform. Critical word. And God says to the watchman, if you you are faithful, you'll blow the trumpet while you're awake and alert from this high platform. You'll blow the trumpet or the shofar. It will wake up my people. They'll rouse themselves, and they will get ready militarily uh, to protect themselves from uh, uh, an invading nation. 
that's going to slaughter them. So you do your job, Watchman. You're up there on the platform, and you blow the trumpet because you can see the enemy clearly because you've trained yourself. You can tell the difference between shadows, bushes, and enemy soldiers. So, the critical thing here, God says, is if you're faithful to blow the trumpet to rouse my people, and you were faithful, the Lord says to the watchman, then you will be blessed. And I'm not going to hold you account uh, for for the deaths of my children. But if you are up on, or if you forget to go up on the high platform, or if you are up on the platform and you fall asleep, or you fail to notice the enemy coming from the distance, and then you fail, and those super civilizations were, then uh, when the enemy comes down upon the camp of Israel and smashes through the gates, um, and slaughters all of the people of Israel, the Lord says, that blood bath will be held to the account of the children of Israel's leaders who failed to hear your warning, your shofar, your trumpet blast. They chose to ignore it, and that brought about the slaughter upon them. Then God said to the watchman, I, you will be innocent of that because you were faithful in your job. But if you fall asleep in your job, you fail to go up on the platform, you fail to observe that the enemy troops are coming in from the distance, and you fail to blow the shofar or the trumpet, and then the enemy comes, and my people are not alerted by you, the Lord says, I will personally hold you accountable to the watchman, he says, for the blood of my people. The blood of my people will be on your hands. Now, we got to remember, when God says, says stuff like this, he's not just playing games. He's saying that to every Christian who has been called to be a watchman. And to varying degrees, we all have a call, either to do it by ourselves or to partner with a true watchman, true watchman ministry. And I would say Paul McGuire Ministries in Paradise Mountain Church is is and has been for over 40 years, among other things, a true watchman on the wall ministry. So, notice that I said that the watchman was commanded by God to go up on platforms, elevated platforms, so he could see the enemy coming in from the distance. Remember the use of the word platform and the need for the watchman to access and acquire a platform. And think about that. And then remember that I've been talking about on this program for a while, and in my recent book, The Greatest Battle, I've been talking about the reality that that the entities or elite that control uh, social media platforms, those that control the platforms, control the content of the information uh, in the, on the Internet. And those that control the technology of the Internet, the Internet itself is one mass giant platform. So if, if that platform is blocking you from seeing the truth or obscuring you from uh, seeing and hearing the truth, then <clears throat> in a sense they're putting you in, in danger. But the greater danger is that if God's people who are called to be watchmen on the wall uh, fail in their duties as a watchman, then then the blood of the slaughter of God's people will be on the hand of the watchman, and there will be a great slaughter of God's people. This is not something that God wants. So you see, when I pray and seek the Lord, for the people that contact us through email, letters, and other forms of communication. When I pray for you, or I pray for myself, or I pray for Paul McGuire Ministries and the outreach of Paradise Mountain Church, 
when I pray for those things, and when I pray, which I constantly do in research, Lord, lead me to truth and open my eyes. And I'm in constant communication with the Lord, waiting on the Lord, asking the Lord for his wisdom and guidance. And so the Lord speaks to me. Challenges will happen. It's like in your life. Challenges will happen. And, and, and in the context of this conversation that we're having, I'm going to share with you some truths from this conversation that I believe will give you enormous, absolutely enormous spiritual power that will enable you to defeat your enemies and to be an overcomer in all kinds of areas. So it kind of works like this. Um, there, there is and has been for a long time. I've been researching, reading books or, or, or writing books for 40 years. Actually, it began in third grade, but I don't go back that far because nobody would believe me. And um, it was obvious to me, it was obvious to many thinkers and researchers and many people from many different spectrums of life that perhaps the greatest battle zone in our society, in our culture, in our world, going back 40 years, 50 years at least, uh, was that the greatest battle zone where it existed was in the hearts and minds of mankind. That the actual battle is going on in the hearts and minds and souls of mankind. That's why I call my book The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World. But that battle for the hearts and minds of mankind also includes the, the numerous platforms upon which this battle for the hearts and minds of mankind is occurring. And that would be like elevated platforms like in ancient Israel or in the Old Testament that you could see off in the distance. And in today's world, the emphasis would be uh, regarding pl uh, platforms more in terms with technology and science, like social media platforms or internet platforms. But they serve a similar purpose. They give you enhanced uh, elevation and knowledge and understanding if you use them properly. So that's where the greatest battle is occurring. It used to occur just like in movies and television and books. It still occurs in movies, books, and television, including episodic television. But it has, it, it has expanded with, first it was cable, then it was the Internet, then it was social media and you know, cell phones and on and on and on. So there is this real world, and then there's this virtual world of ideas. And when you uh, are, are called to function and speak and communicate in those worlds, in order to do it effectively and strategically, you have to take advantage of these platforms. So, for example, when you're involved in the greatest battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world, this battle has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And it goes back to the origin of the United States of America, 1776. It goes back to when the Pilgrims and Puritans started coming here, which was the 1600s. It goes back to the kings and queens of England. And it goes back to, finally, it goes back to ancient Egypt. It goes back to Babylon at the time of the Tower of Babel. It goes back to Mount Hermon when the fallen angels descended on Mount Hermon. And there's a, a long history of this battle. That's why my book is called For the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World. It goes back to ancient history. So, one of the strategies of this battle 
is to, it's a competition of ideas, it's a competition of belief systems, it's a competition of ideologies and religions. And the people that come out with the most persuasive is an essential part of this process because the more strategic you are using creativity in your community, the more people you will And that's that's what it's all about. So, going back to ancient super civilizations, we see that early mankind after the fall that because mankind has a fallen human nature, we all have a fallen human nature today, except that we can be saved. Our sins can be forgiven by the blood of Jesus that gains us entrance into heaven. But we are born, all of us are born with a fallen human nature, a propensity towards evil. So what, so what does this mean? It means that because we have a propensity towards evil, that's what we do, overtly, overtly. Uh, uh, people's human nature, people conspiring, people positioning themselves, people battling for power, self, ego, or whatever. That's all part of uh, fallen human nature. So, in the early super civilizations, which our educational system doesn't even essentially acknowledge, so so kids have no idea that there were super civilizations. Some are myth- mythological, they're, they're not sure that they existed, but some definitely existed. And so, in these ancient super civilizations, which kind of took off with ancient Babylon at the time of the building of the Tower of Babel, what we learn is that this ancient Babylonian society was the world's first new world order, the world's first one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system. That whole global system was known back then and in the future as Mystery Babylon or or Babylon the Great or or other words that that indicated the the acknowledgement of this Babylonian system. Now, in the book of Revelation, ancient Babylon or Mystery Babylon returns. Fallen, fallen is, is, is Babylon, Babylon the Great. That's that mystery Babylon, that super spiritual, satanic, occult system that rules any sphere of human, human activity. So we have mankind being mankind. They have a fallen human nature. And the elite, the, the, the people who choose to worship Satan and Lucifer with the most fervency, the the elite of uh, ancient Babylon. Their uh, occult religion, known as Mystery Babylon, is spreading all over the earth. It spreads to ancient Egypt, and Mystery Babylon is very much a part of ancient Egypt, as it is all world empires and occult world empires. So, when we read Revelation, we read about how Mystery Babylon is returning in the last days, and that God is going to judge Babylon. So, it says, fallen, fallen. And Mystery Babylon is characterized as being a prostitute, but also a global spiritual system. But that global spiritual system began in ancient Babylon at the time of the Tower of Babel. So secret societies, which are are composed of the elite people, the elite class, the 1%, secret societies in super civilizations like ancient Babylon at the time of the Tower of Babel, um, they consolidate their power, they pass on their power, they enforce their power over other people, over money, over armies, over everything. They, they control and rule everything by using a very carefully uh, woven, but at the same time, top, top secret 
occult, scientific, technological, satanic system that enables them, when they practice it and, and, and execute it properly, it enables them to conquer any nation, conquer other people, uh, to be rulers of the world, be rulers of this world system, because they're in union spiritually with Satan who's the temporary god of this uh, spiritual world system and the world system. So, Mystery Babylon is still alive today. It, it may not be called Mystery Babylon at this particular moment, and secret societies change their names all the time. So, for example, the Illuminati is very much alive. I've been researching the Illuminati, and I... I uncover all kinds of things for you to read that are documented in my books like A Prophecy of the Future of America, Volume 1 and 2, Mass Awakening, which talks about the principles and how you ignite a mass awakening for evil or a mass awakening for God or good. You know, what happened with all the riots and all that stuff, that didn't come out of nowhere. Read mass awakening. That that was pre-planned. And there's a, a, a cultic connections. So, uh, those books and then other books like uh, The Day the Dollar Died, uh, Conquering the Matrix, which deals with mind control and how to break it. All of those books and The Greatest Battle are available at discounts for you at paulmcguire.us. Learn what they're saying. Knowledge is built upon knowledge. There's the law of reciprocity. The more godly knowledge, the more truth you acquire, the more power and and wisdom you also simultaneously acquire. So when you see the fact that many nations and empires in the world are secretly ruled behind the scenes, by principalities and powers, territorial spirits, dark, unseen forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Most world empires, or regional world empires, are ruled behind the scenes by powerful, satanic, occultic forces. That's what's really ruling a particular area. And then the highest level evil spirits ruling a particular area would be called territorial spirits. An example of territorial spirits are the spirits that were battling the prophet Daniel in uh, ancient Babylon, or right before he got into ancient Babylon. And Daniel found out later on from the high-ranking angel uh, Michael and Gabriel. Michael found out from Gabriel that that they were involved in an angelic battle. Gabriel and Michael versus the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Europa. All right, both written about. All of them written about in the Book of Daniel. So it's only till David. Excuse me, it's only until Daniel engages in spiritual warfare, specifically repentance, that he clears the spiritual realm so God's angels can win the victory and and defeat the enemy, and Daniel can be then released to accomplish his prophetic calling, and things begin to move. Many times you and I, in this physical world, One of the key things that we have to learn, and the Lord is always trying to teach us, is that you learn to to develop your gift of discernment. You learn to use discernment, because you need discernment, for example, to discern the difference between some kind of just heavy emotional thing, heavy intense thing, something that's just heavy in the human sense, all right, versus Something that, in the physical realm, that is highly energized, could it be, but it's a question, could it be that, that they're, it's being energized by satanic, demonic forces at a very high level? 
So whatever chaos you see, whatever conflict you're, you're witnessing, it's being energized by demonic satanic forces and principalities and powers and territorial spirits. This is what Gabriel was essentially telling, telling Daniel. So the critical thing here in this mystery Babylon religion is it allowed what I call, and what I have called in my books, the Pharaoh God Kings. Those are the people that were genetically born to be the pharaohs and the female pharaohs, whatever they're called, of um, uh, ancient Egypt. And the reason the people would do anything, 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 that the, the pharaohs, or what I call the pharaoh god kings and the pharaoh god queens of Egypt demanded of them, the reason they would do anything was because they had been brainwashed, hypnotized, mind-controlled through ancient sorcery to be the perfect slaves. They were programmed to be the slaves of the Pharaoh God King system. And they did everything with a big smile on their face because everything they did, they were programmed to believe they were actually worshiping their God, Pharaoh, or or the female Pharaoh. They were worshiping their gods when they did whatever they were told to do. So, So when the ancient Jews, who should have known better because they were supposed to be studying the Word and centered on the Word of God and the Old Testament God, but instead they were backsliding as they were in captivity in ancient Egypt, which simply means, as you know, they were serving as slaves. One of their primary duties was to manufacture the bricks made out of mud and uh, straw. And uh, they had a huge quota every day. And they, they, they had to slave and toil to build these for Pharaoh. Yet they loved their servitude. They loved their slavery because, because they had started to backslide. They started to believe that they were, by doing all this stuff, they were actually worshiping uh, a better god, the, the better god called Pharaoh or Pharaoh's wife. That's the Pharaoh God King system. So you see, this is used by all the men and women, or I should say not all, but many of the men and women throughout history who have made a deal with the devil and are serving Satan secretly uh, through secret societies and occult and satanic actions. They are, they are, they have been programmed. The people who are the slaves have been programmed to be slaves. And so, in fact, I've said this many times, but it needs to repeat it, be repeated constantly. The whole basis of Mystery Babylon, the whole basis of what I call the Pharaoh God King system, is really the same thing when we come up to our modern time. It's the same exact thing that Aldous Huxley, author of A Brave New World, said. He said, when you have scientifically program the people or hypnotize them or brainwash them. And if you've done it properly, Huxley said, you can program the masses of people to joyously serve you as slaves and to function as slaves. And he said, they will be so programmed to be slaves that they will love being slaves and they will love all the servitude or, or tasks or, or, or slave-like assignments that they're given. They're, they, they love it because they've been brainwashed into believing they are slaves and they'll be happy as slaves. And they're also brainwashed into believing that they're actually serving their masters as gods. And it's an act of worship. So you see how this psychological mind game, it's, it's really psyops, psychological warfare. What you're looking at is psyops or psychological warfare. What do I mean by that? In psychological warfare, which I write about a lot in a lot of my books, like A Prophecy of the Future of America, Volume 1 and 2, Mass Awakening, Conquering the Matrix, The Greatest Battle, and others, 
I go into detail about the brainwashing process. Why? Because it is the secret control system that was used by the elite at the beginning of time, starting and taking off in ancient Babylon, and is is alive and well more than ever in our present time. So you brainwash the masses to be your slaves, to serve you as slaves, to be joyous in it. And 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 the way you brainwash them is you use ancient satanic occult uh, magic rituals chemicals uh, all kinds of methods of inducing altered states of consciousness etc you can put the masses of people in a in a very subtle but powerful hypnotic state and they'll serve you like slaves so ask yourself the question why is it that there's so many millions and millions of people in America and around the world in the European Union and around the world who don't even ask the most basic questions about their life like why am I alive what is my purpose in life what am I doing here on planet earth they don't ask themselves the most basic questions they have they don't seem to have an awareness of really the, the awareness of the reality that's all around them is very flimsy they're, they're in many places disconnected from that reality and instead have chosen with their will, either consciously or subconsciously, they, they have chosen to buy into this like world system, virtual reality illusion, the matrix, in, in which your mind is so caught up in soap operas and silly TV programs and movies and music and pop stars and, you know, what country star is marrying what country star or who won the bachelor or bachelorette or whatever. And it goes on and on and on. And it is a artificial reality. It's a a virtual reality designed to keep the minds and hearts of the masses occupied with endless trivia. It becomes a form of sorcery, science and technology, to put you in a hypnotic state that is designed to to make you a slave, and you won't question anything. You won't ask questions. You won't disagree. You, you will be in heaven. Now, think about this. This very thing that we're discussing is probably one of the most intense subjects you can bring up. And usually, if you even get near it, it can impact people. They, they get upset, upset because they've never allowed themselves to see their reality clearly. And yet it brings us to the root of what God's Word is saying. This brings us to the root of what the Bible is teaching about reality. This brings us to the root, the bottom line of everything regarding our lives what we're supposed to be doing here on planet Earth, and everything else. It brings us to the bottom, bottom line. And what is that? It's that which was started in the Garden of Eden when Eve disobeyed God and Adam disobeyed God. They ate from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden because Lucifer, or Satan, indwelling a serpent, kind of hypnotize them, and they chose to break the law of God by eating from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. Then a curse. They unleashed a curse upon themselves. The fall of a man, they activated the law of sin and death. The fall of man occurred. They began to die. They all began to, people began to die. And uh, man began to be sinful. And the entire nature of the human race and the entire nature of this world was totally recreated. And in the process, Satan became the temporary god of this world. And he rules this world with himself as the temporary god, but with all the fallen angels, one third of the angels that have chosen to follow 
Lucifer in his rebellion against God, and all the men and women who have chosen to worship or follow Satan in the occult. And this warfare between God and Satan taking place on multiple dimensions is culminating in what the Bible calls the last days. We're in the last days. It's culminating in the last days. And that means an all-out war or battle between God and Satan, between God's highest level angels and Satan's highest angels, between the varying ranks of demons, principalities, and powers, dark unseen forces of wickedness, and then the various rankings of God's territorial spirits and, and angels with others, other special assignments from God. And then finally, between those human beings who are serving Satan and those human beings that are serving God on earth. So we're in that multidimensional spiritual war of the last days. And our job is to win that war because Jesus Christ said, Occupy until I come. And so the way to win this war is that the evil one, is fully understanding of the fact that the primary battlefield in this massive spiritual war, the primary battlefield is in the heart and minds and souls of mankind. The devil and the demons know this. God's people are slow to to get this. But the, the, the main battlefield is in the hearts, minds, imagination, soul, heart of men and women. And so the name of the game is to get the content of either Satan's ideas and beliefs and programs to get Satan's belief system downloaded into every human being so they absorb Satan's beliefs or is the goal to position things so that God's belief system And the belief system from the Word of God gets into the heart, mind, and soul of every man and woman alive, and thus making changes on behalf of the kingdom of God. See, this is the central battlefield. This is this is that this is the core of everything. This is the epicenter. And when yet the vast majority of Christians alive on planet Earth today, and perhaps in previous generations. But you could talk to millions of Christians in America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, all over the world. And out of those hundreds and hundreds of millions of Christians, a much, much smaller percent would have a real understanding of the real nature of this multidimensional spiritual war that is raging inside the hearts and minds of mankind and is raging all across planet Earth right now. Only a small percentage of all Christians alive would, ha- would know that. So, if you were Satan, and you're not, and I'm not, thank God, your goal would be to insert your ideas in the brains and minds of every man and woman that you could. Because then you have them made into your slaves. You blinded them to your reality. The only thing that can set men free and get them saved and, and, and allow God's kingdom to spread on this earth and more souls to be one for Jesus Christ is when God's people and God and the angels insert the wisdom from the Word of God into the hearts and minds of people, into the imaginations. And then, when that happens, and there's a battle for it, then the battle is won, or the war is won. Ultimately, the war will be won by God, period. No ands, ifs, or buts about that. But in the short term, God continues to win. And that winning is enhanced and accomplished by inserting his ideas in the hearts and minds of mankind by the millions. That's what this is all about. So my question to you is, 
what is your life all about? Your life should be about many things. God blesses. God is good. God, you know, is a good God. So your life should be about many things. But never forget, your life is a gift. And God has given you the gift of your own individual life in order for you to accomplish the specific assignments or missions or or purposes that God created and designed to be accomplished through you you and your life. See, unlike the evolutionary people, we don't believe in mythologies. You have a purpose for your life. Never forget it. God has a call in your life. And you will never experience fulfillment, the power, the zeal, the the wonder, the, the serenity, the peace of mind. You will never experience that to its fullest level until you choose to walk through that door and walk with God in whatever, in whatever he's calling to you. Thank you for listening. Please spread this edition of the Paul McGuire Report far and wide. And remember to visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And spread our websites and our content and messages far and wide. And pray over it as you do. God bless you. This is Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. Mm-hmm.